So this is the insides of the monitor. I have already like uh, dusted off a little bit. Uh, it wasn't that bad actually. It was much better than I was expecting. So now it's just like a matter of uh, you now carefully. Uh, I'm using like a, a cloth just to actually clean the parts up. It is uh, just uh, you know to remove the dust more efficiently and I will have to let it dry a little bit on the outside because this cloth is it's not damp but uh, it is uh, I have to wet it a little bit so the dust actually gets uh, captured by it so yeah it's uh, in overall in very good shape apparently So the adjustments and everything they seem to be still like in original settings might need some adjust adjustments I don't know still have to turn it on to actually check this out I'm not going to make it perfect you know on the inside in terms of dust it looks already like fairly good I'm not going to disassemble the electronics for this one there is no uh, need for it so right now it's just uh, pretty much this. I'm going to start the reassembling process of this guy now. So I'm going to put back the the cage, the metal cage and uh, and everything else. And uh, and then the repaired cage uh, case, sorry. And then I will have to clean this uh, this frame well the bezel I'm going to clean it up after it has been reassembled just because it's easier that way and uh, and that's pretty much it I think yeah so the bezel is going to be further cleaned after I reassemble this so that's it off to the reassembling process and then testing yeah I know I should have tested before you know having to go through all this trouble but the truth is I don't like to turn on those very old monitors without having a looking inside anyway like uh, it might explode or who knows what so I actually rather like uh, open it up checking the insides making sure everything is in decent shape so that I can uh, well kind of like more safely turn it on and test it okay so I think it's fairly decent now yeah it looks okay so this is a Sony Trinitron as you can see here in the tag it was made in Japan which is something unusual nowadays uh, it is from 92 from another uh, tag that I saw in some other place and uh, yeah it's it's a very good monitor and uh, that's why I'm going through all this trouble you know to uh, refurbish it it's just like a way too good to be left the way the way it was it was so that's it I will show you uh, the final result when I reassemble everything clean the bezel up uh, clean the, the screen with a proper uh, windshield screening uh, well, uh, glass uh, glass uh, washer or whatever it is that is called welcome back so this is the finished product uh, so those are the fixes with uh, the epoxy as you can see here and there and there so it's quite visible actually it doesn't look too bad but in here as well so this is the crack remember that and uh, all the epoxy touches and uh, so this is the back actually I was uh, looking at the date so the date is 94 so it's December 94 the man manufacture date of this guy there you go and uh, 
well the, the monitor actually looks very good it's a little bit yellowed in the, in the front it's not too bad uh, the screen looks perfect almost like uh, I saw just a minor scratch very tiny one that doesn't affect anything and uh, yeah it's uh, that's the finished monitor basically I don't have anything else to do here other than test it and make sure it works one thing that I was noticing is that there is this additional port here and this looks like a super video port so I have to look at the specs of this monitor but uh, if this is indeed like a super video port then I might be able to replace that Sony monitor that I have with this one and use that second port to connect my next spectrum with spectrum next so that's it guys hope you liked it and uh, well that's pretty much it for this guy so I'm going to focus on the desktop now the tower actually and uh, and that's it I will post it afterwards cheers okay my friends this is the final result so this is the beauty beautiful uh, 8100 tower uh, it, it looks beautiful it looks like uh, I didn't do retro brighting or anything and it really looks like uh, very white the color it should be uh, the monitor looks great as well uh, I'm missing the door here but I don't care the screen looks okay like no scratches as I said there's a minor scratch here there is barely noticeable everything else looks fine uh, of course there are all the repairs that I've done which by the way they look really solid like uh, I think this monitor the case at least is going to last for a good a while after this so now it's time for testing I have plugged everything in and uh, I want to see like uh, how it performs so basically I cleaned everything up inside of the tower everything I didn't document that because it's just like uh, you guys have seen this thousands of times right so uh, I cleaned everything I cleaned the floppy disk I cleaned the hard drives I cleaned all the insides I removed everything and the, the particularity about this particular model is it is hell to disassemble it it's uh, it's not like the other Macs. It's really like you have to put a lot of effort in order to uh, take it apart. So uh, it is not enjoyable at all. But I've done it. Uh, everything is clean. The floppy disk is clean. I haven't tested it yet. So it is now uh, smoke test time. So let's see if it works. So uh, let me see if this button here works. Yeah, so we have something. Good, monitor is powered on. We have like a healthy chime, which is good. So monitor powered off. Not sure if this is expected. So let's wait a little bit and see. I don't hear any hard disks. Uh, so we have two hard drives inside of this guy. I have no idea about sizes or anything. Uh, it looks like they spun up because I can hear them actually spinning but I don't hear any okay monitor is back up this is a good sign let's see if we have yes some data access oh perfect look at that so we have a happy Mac and apparently it's putting up so at least one of the hard drives is healthy which is great yes Mac OS 9.1 great so yeah sorry about the uh, the flickering it's just that i'm using my mobile here to film this so i couldn't adjust um, the frequency uh, so that it could uh, you know so sorry about that but trust me like the image looks solid uh, it looks amazing actually uh, it is a trinitron you can actually tell if you look uh, of course this screen the, the camera isn't going to take it but you have two uh, lines very thin lines crossing the screen here, which is uh, a very uh, typical sign of Trinitron monitors So let's wait for it to boot up and See the specs on this guy like I saw that there was a lot of memory on the board uh, I had I have no idea how much because uh, the memory sticks 
they weren't actually saying the amount of memory each one had so I have to wait until it finishes booting up to tell you guys so just so you know the story of behind this guy uh, a guy at eBay he found the monitor and the tower on the dumpster and uh, he didn't know exactly what it was he found it to be okay sound is working which is good he found it to be like uh, nice so he picked it up he created an account to eBay first time and he put that for auction beginning uh, with uh, 30, 30 quid I bid on it and I was the only one so as you saw before like uh, the case was like uh, with a lot of crime it was very dirty but uh, overall the shape was uh, was okay uh, the face plate here on the CD was uh, actually uh, broken so the the tab was broken so I have to fix that using um, epoxy as well and the monitor well you saw the whole story behind it um, the whole thing was basically uh, it, it was crumbling down and uh, I had to use a lot of epoxy to try to make this a little more reliable so it looks okay now um, yeah but I wasn't expecting it to actually be working to be really honest with you guys like uh, it is working perfectly the guy told me it was working but uh, you know eBay well that's it like I paid like 30 quid for it and uh, I actually bought it because I love this tower it really looks nice and uh, always wanted to have one so well we have one well we have the two hard drives here actually so let's let's use the Apple profiler to see what we have here so let's wait for it to load okay so we have well look at that 264 meg of RAM which is actually quite a lot of RAM uh, okay what else so it's a power PC 601 at 100 uh, megahertz so yeah this is a 8100 slash 100 uh, what else so let's let's look at that at the discs so let's see the size of them so both are SCSI drives the first one has 4.5 gigs of RAM uh, of, of space which is very good size for a SCSI drive the second one has um, slightly yeah it's half of it so 2 gigs of uh, space which is also very good so uh, even if everything went wrong and the drives were working at least I got like two SCSI discs for like 30 quid that was my you know uh, feeling when I bid on that and uh, the monitor look, looked nice as well I knew it wasn't going to be perfect but uh, it's a Trinitron and uh, it's always worth you know like trying to see this state of it so I, I guess I got lucky uh, in the end like overall like everything was uh, it's actually in very good shape it, it wasn't a lot of work actually to brought to bring this back to a nice you know like state I have to test the floppy so let's let's see okay so It would be nice to test the CD-ROM as well. So I think I have something here. Okay. So let's test both. So let's start with uh, the floppy drive. Well, it's doing something. Yeah, it looks healthy. And it is just mounted the disc here. Yeah, it looks looks great. Perfect. So let me put that away. Let's see if the jack mechanism is working. <laughs> Look at that. Everything works. And let's test the C D ROM with uh, the seventh guest. Disc. 
So let's see how that goes. And then after that, let's take a look on the disk, see what the previous owner has left for us. Yeah, it's CD-ROM is working as well. Here is the, the CD. Yeah, looks great. Perfect. Well, that's really great. Like everything is working as expected. Oops. Very satisfied. So the next thing that I might want to try is also to install the DOS compatibility card on this guy. Even though like it's not officially supported by Apple, uh, I have uh, read on the internet that some people were actually able to do it. So I might give it a try and if that works I might uh, take this tower as my uh, my my actual day-to-day -day, uh, vintage Mac and uh, I might sell the 6100 that I have there uh, it's going to save us some desk space as well if I do something like this so yeah it is something for me to consider so I might try that afterwards uh, not today of course so what else let's see what's in the disk so this is the system disk and in terms of applications, so we have, um, let's say Internet Utilities, Aladdin, so nothing too special, Classzilla, so this guy was uh, basically using apparently this uh, Power Mac to browse uh, modern internet because uh, Classzilla normally is used for that, which is a good sign so that means that this machine was actually being used until not too long ago mm, Netscape security what is inside here yeah. okay uh, Outlook Express so let's see if this guy will, was using Outlook Express and whether or not he left data behind it's amazing, you know, how people just dispose of, like, uh, computers and forget about hard drives and uh, personal information and stuff. So, it's, uh, it's not very good, of course. So, let's see if this is the case here. I'm really amazed uh, with the quality of the image on this particular monitor. Like, it looks really great. It's flat screen and uh, classic Trinitron thing going on here. Yeah, it looks amazing really satisfied with this like it was uh, a bit of work you know to get everything uh, cleaned up and running but uh, yeah it, it totally worth it uh, okay so apparently no this guy didn't leave anything behind or he wasn't look using uh, he wasn't using Outlook Express at all so let's quit and yeah, there is not much else here in this particular folder. So it's interesting because I see here some Microsoft uh, Office things, but I, I have to see where it is. Not sure what this is. Yeah, I have no idea. Maybe it's like... A yeah, I'm not going to open it. Well, I can try this later. So, documents. Mozilla. Yeah, there's no, no, nothing really. Okay, so maybe inside of the systems folder. Um, now it looks like a traditional systems folder without any else on it yeah that is funny you know like where is this so I have opened this already right Acrobat documents okay so it has, has to be here huh. and then you go to the other hard drive and there is nothing so maybe this is not working anymore it is. So where is this coming from? 
That's weird. Well, it might be in some folder. I had no idea. So Stephen Hawkins. <laughs> yeah, probably like a joke or something. Yeah, I don't know. So, but uh, yeah, apparently like uh, the office suite is uh, it's working, apparently. So it's loading up. Well, that's pretty much it. Like, uh, not gonna, you know, like uh, waste more time on that. I'm very happy. Everything seems to be working just fine. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to shut it down and uh, and decide what am I going to do with it. Still have this other beast here that I have to work on, like this guy here. So my original idea was. Um, to do what everybody does, which is basically like uh, just use the tower with uh, an ATX board or something like it. But um, thinking about again, I might be able to refurbish this guy to be still be a G5. I don't know. I might want to keep it original. So still have to decide on that as well. Okay, so. That's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching and see you soon.